Good evening, and welcome to Carnegie Town Hall. I call to order this regular meeting of the City Planning Commission, and we'll begin with a few introductory remarks. Action taken tonight on rezoning request, major amendments, future land use amendments, and ordinance amendments will be referred to the City Council on Tuesday at 6 p.m. here at Carnegie Hall. Action taken on preliminary subdivision plans will be referred to the City Council for action on Tuesday, June 19th, 2012, unless associated with a zoning request, which would then be heard by the City Council on Tuesday, July 3rd. Action taken tonight on conditional use permits is final unless appealed to the City Council in any action taken tonight on final development plans or minor amendments is final. At this time, the Commission with the consent and regular agendas. In order to place certain non commercial items on the Commission's consent agenda, the Commission applies the following criteria. The request conforms to the shape Sioux Falls 25. Second, planning recommends approval of the members present or written comments received in opposition. Fourth, the application meets all conditions and requirements of the ordinance. Now, read the consent item this evening. Meeting. Number one would be the approval uh, of regular meeting. Number two would be plats. Number three would be a rezone RS residential district to the S institutional district for allowed uses at 1826 South Grange Avenue. Number four is a rezone in the RS2 residential district 2S institutional district for allowed uses at 1904 South Grange. Number five, the area A, Willow Run Plan Development District to expand sub area borders for future single and multifamily residential subdivision and development at 8,000 East Highway 42. Number six would be a major amendment to sub areas A and B of Sanford Sports Complex Plan Development District to add additional land uses as permitted in the district at North Bob Holla Drive and West Benson Road. Number seven would be a conditional use permit in the I-2 General Industrial District to allow expansion of outdoor storage for, for Vander Hegg's Inc. truck salvage at 1701 East 54th Street North. Number eight would be a conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow expansion of a non commercial use in South Summit Avenue. I nine would be a conditional use permit in the C2 General Commercial District to allow an on sale alcohol establishment at 2313 West. 12th Street. Number 10 would be a condition permit in the S Industrial District to allow a boarding house at 20 Summit Avenue. Number 11 would be a conditional use permit in the C4 Plan Commercial District to allow development site greater than an acre 
at 500 South Foss Avenue. Item 12 would be a conditional use permit C2 General Commercial District to allow motor vehicle sales at 2609 East 10th Street. Number 13 would be a amendment in subarea 5 of Platinum Valley Plan Development District to reduce the required rear yard setback from 30 feet to 25 feet at 3531 and 3534 West 91st Street Place. Number 14 design review in the downtown design construction of a five-story hotel would there be any objections to the consent items from staff mr. chair my name is Steve Randall I'm representing planning this evening uh, we've had a request to move item 14 from the consent agenda to the regular agenda. Uh, we also have staff recommendations of deferral for items 18 and 19 on the regular agenda. All right. Uh, thank you. Is there any item that we've mentioned? Uh, is there anyone in the audience that would like to talk about any of the items I've just walked through? If so, this would be your opportunity to come in and tell us which number, and we would move it from the consent. Okay, see none. Are there? Oh, why don't you start the podium? Is there any else here that would like something moved? If not, I would ask the Planning Commissioner members, are there any items that you would like moved from the uh, consent agenda to the regular agenda? Seeing none, I would look for a motion to approve the consent agenda. Mr. Chair, I'll move to approve the consent agenda with items 3, 4, and 14 moved to the regular agenda. We have a motion. I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. We to the Uh, said that I would look for a motion to approve the regular agenda with items 3 4 and 14 being added to the regular agenda mr. chair motion to uh, approve the regular agenda with items 3 4 and 14 added and 18 and 19 deferred I'll second we have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Point ask for third. Motion. Did we get a second to that? Yes. We've got a second. Any further discussion? I say yes. Motion.
I am with Item number three and additional items this evening. Item number three is a rezone from the RS2 residential district to the S institutional district for allowed uses. Uh, the, applic the applicant is Frank Hughes with Augustana College and item number three is located at 1826 South Grange Avenue. As noted, the existing zoning is RS2 residential district and is surrounded by similar zonings and have been, and the request has been assigned a compatibility rating of four. Grange Avenue is classified as a collector street. Accessibility is directly onto Grange Avenue. The area around Augustana College is a major, major institution according to the 2035 Shape Sioux Falls Comprehensive Plan. Conversion of existing single family residential properties near the campus to institutional related uses is allowed. However, the applicant should take care to inform the neighbors and develop transition techniques in order to minimize potential land use conflicts. Development of a theme house at this location will be classified as a college or institutional use and will require a conditional use permit. The applicant has applied for that permit and the applicant application will be scheduled for review at an upcoming planning commission meeting pending the outcome of the request. I do know that the applicant has had a neighborhood meeting. Uh, the planning office sent out letters to everybody, to every property owner within 300 feet and uh, we until this evening had not received any comment from any neighbors on either of these items. Uh, so because the subject application conforms to the shape of in addition David, before you sit down, would there be any questions of David from any of the commissioners this evening? Thank Dave, you, Dave from the look, excuse, excuse me. me. It appears that this is an exhibit. Do you know? Is that correct? I don't know if it's rental or or uh, owned. Single family. Single family. I, well, I believe Augustana owns, but owns it. But the applicant will be able to confirm that when he comes. Thank up. you. Any other questions for David? Mm, seeing none. Thank you, David. With, is the petitioner here? Housing three unrelated occupants living in the facility up until um, well, it's vacant right now at the moment for turnover till next fall. We've had three students living there up until this time. And can you tell us how many uh, theme houses will that this uh, make with the pending approval of items three and four? How many theme houses will Augie have at that time? Well, we have 16. Now, so this would be number 17. Thank you. Or this fall, it's a fairly small house, so that's, four students. that's the plan for this fall is to have four students living there. I can remember when the first time that you folks did this, if I'm not mistaken. <coughs> I believe these are put on a, uh, you have security at the college. House. They would a dorm? No, it's much more stringent and involved in almost twice as many applicants so in students it's mostly carried out by our house department um, there are less on that process too it is very competitive each team is a uh, then there it's been you had there was a neighborhood meeting you well I did not conduct a neighborhood meeting so it was not 
us any personal consent, uh, all this information to each and every uh, person that's on the list within or what the feet or the requirements. So each person that owns property that's by this received a personal letter from me. Explaining the theme house concept. Explaining the theme, yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the only, we did have a handful of, of questions, but uh, in every case they were from other neighbors that wanted the same houses. That's, <laughs> that's the questions that we received. So. All right, thank you. Would anyone else have any questions? If not, thank you. Ooh, thanks. Is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this issue this evening? Yes. Why don't thing happens you know four blocks from your house if they want to do it at the 2000 block next year it gets improved approved and and so on and so forth so it wouldn't be long until a house on my block would be asking for this zoning it's my number And So if I'm a company, the clubbers, and the um, students, and them, name. The teams are you know people in the family many of them have done and they want to go to they want to they go a bit and you know that does this happen. Uh, I think I think changes in the Make a neighborhood, make every piece. I struggle with spot zoning, and I have a house that rent out in this hood, and I like to rent it to college kids. I, I enjoy them, but before I let anybody move. I always said whoever is going to be moved in and explain you 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 are making a choice not to live on the campus and therefore you have to set a good example to the children in the neighborhood and you know I, I have always lucked out and and everything but um, not not every student that we have had living to us has been a good example. I guess that's it. Oh, before you leave, Lois, uh, thank you for coming this evening. Would any commissioners have any questions of Lois or, or comments? Uh, in a nutshell, you're concerned about the property management Yes, yes, and 
Um, no, yeah, I write, you know, that's safety or something. I've arrived in the neighborhood. But they're not particularly good. You know, if you notice a party and a lot of noises going in the area, call many times get no results from them whatsoever. Um, All right. Uh, you bring up a couple points. We might ask Frank to come back up and hopefully make you feel comfortable. You received a letter from the college? Oh, no, I did not. Are you outside of this particular? Well, I live 2215, and this one is 18. Okay, so you're four blocks away. You're probably outside the. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Is there anyone else who would like to address this issue? Yes, I live at 1809. Would you mind coming up to the podium? And So I live um, from the 1826 kind of kitty corner across the street. Okay. And my concerns are the same as hers being four blocks down. Um, I didn't receive a letter as well regarding the merits of what is expected. told people that own it okay. uh, before you sit down would the commission have any questions your name. Is that a theme? Shouldn't it be? No, I'd be more north and a north. Okay. Um, Is it a theme house? Well, there's a sign on it. So it's, a, it's a rental, and yeah, I believe that the um, Baptist preacher owned. It at one time, okay. or still does. I'm not sure. Um, I know he was aging, so okay. um, and he owns the house on the corner as well, or did. So I'm not sure what the you know. <laughs> okay. But it's, it's a it's it's not owned by Augustana, but you suspect there are Augustana students renting. Well, I know the ones that is north. There's a. I'm 1809, then there's 1825, and then that's the house north. It's on the corner there. The per he also owns the house Kitty Corner, that big white one that used to own. Um, a policeman used to live in. And I believe the University of Sioux Falls students rent that more. They have a few, but it's not as bad as the house on my block. All right. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone else in the audience that would like to address this particular item, item number three?
they're not can to do an account and take care of that owning the stuff would be nothing, nothing anyhow that we know of can do. Frank, I'm coming back up one more time. Here's two citizens in the neighborhood that have concerns. If you can put their concerns, please. Perhaps we can start with the issue that we to, hmm. to talk about, at least to begin with. And this particular address at 1826 um, has a double car garage and an extremely large uh, driveway. So we're anticipating that uh, that, that there, there will no there will not be a need for any off uh, property parking or any street parking associated with well with either of the two properties that we're talking about tonight. There's there's adequate parking to handle the the number of occupants we plan on having you know stay in in the in the home. So it shouldn't interfere with any public parking uh, on the street. So hopefully that. have access to the police or access security for the houses you own. Exactly. So, and that's a good point. Officers really don't have any jurisdiction of enforcement capabilities for property. In, own very in this particular case, it's some of our safety office we do not own, then, then there probably isn't anything we can do that, uh, something that you know, the Sioux Falls Police Department needs to deal with. So when she says she calls the college, that don't have any control over. Correct. But let's say that what is well, that a situation where you can for, for our program. Uh, not our dorm, but for, specifically for our program, alcohol is allowed for the 21 years and older, but it's for their own consumption. It's not for parties. Not not to say that a, that a party has never happened in our theme house because we all know better than that. But if there is an issue, that those are the ones we do deal with. And anyone that's not an Augustana person that's at that house. Looking at one, two, three houses in the fall that will have to sign the limit to access to be correct. I don't know if that'll make these folks feel a little better. I, I know the first time personally, I, I, I like the idea of that type of supervision for some of these houses. There's no question around the neighborhood, landlords are renting houses and gosh, just give me to know. 
prison. Might even put off the providers. So when I was a neighbor having a Mr. Chair, is is there some kind of follow up after the has been made with the people that make the complaints so they're assured that there were some consequences or to the of the Thank you. Is there anyone else here that would like to address uh, item number three? If not, I would look for commission action. Mr. Chair, I'd make the motion to approve the rezone item number three. Second. We have a motion and we have a second uh, discussion. Mr. Chair, the uh, We've been through this for quite some time now, and I suspect that, uh, like Frank said, the vast majority of the homes and or properties in that area are not owned by Augustana. I think there'd be a, a, a far fewer complaints if everything was a theme home than the privately owned. And obviously, Frank and Augustana have limited abilities when it comes to enforcing uh, what happens in non-Augustana own property, so I, I support this because I'm under the impression the program has five, six years. Meredith, I would have to agree with you. I think uh, we've seen that things probably get better when Augie theme houses come to the neighborhood. Um, but I do want to assure the neighbors that if you have a, a rental unit that, that is a, a nuisance issue, um, do bear in mind that only three unrelated people can live in that uh, single-family dwelling, and then you do need to take that to City Hall, and they, um, their enforcement will take care of that. So uh, hopefully that will bring you some relief coming forward. Uh, issues that you can't get landlords to resolve, but I would concur with you, Meredith. I think uh, Augie's proven good neighbor, and <clears throat> things have a tendency to get a little bit better when they're around. Any other comments? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes number three. Dan. Number four is a similar request at 1904 South Grange Avenue. This is a rezone again from the RS2 residential district to the S institutional for allowed uses. The applicant is Frank Hughes with Augustana College again. And uh, as with the previous application, the surrounding land uses are RS2, are zoned RS2 residential, and we've assigned a compatibility rating of four. Again, I'll reiterate that the land area around Augustana College is a major institution according to the 2035 Shape Sioux Falls Comprehensive Plan. Conversion of existing single-family residential properties near the campus to institutional related uses is allowed. However, the applicant should take care to inform the neighbors and develop transition techniques in order to minimize potential land use conflicts. Development of a theme house at this location will be classified as a college use and will require an additional conditional use permit. The applicant has applied for that permit and the application will be scheduled for review at a planning meeting. And those Staff report. Thank you, David. Any questions for David? Petitioner? Is that Frank again? Well, other than specifically talking about parking for this property. Okay. Thank you. Uh, this, this has an alley, so it, it does afford even more off street parking than than the previous property we were talking about. We, all, we have parking off the alley 
uh, east of the house in addition to a garage and a driveway. So again, uh, parking really should not be an issue with this property in terms of crowding the street situation. And how many people do you see living in this particular house? There are three there now. Well, it, it's, this one is vacant also at the moment, but we did have three there uh, this spring, and we plan on putting four there this fall. Okay. If we go through the conditional use, if we, if we get approval throughout the whole process. Thank you. Any questions for Frank? Seeing none, thank you. Anyone in the audience would like to raise this one? Or we'll start. For your comment. Uh, is there any here? Yes, sir. I do more security in the area with these houses coming on board. It's the only comment I got to make. Thank you. Thank you. Did you want to say anything further? Or? Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, David? Is the zoning? Uh, you know, Spot zoning is mildly difficult to specifically define. In this area, we do recognize a transitional type of area with major institutional influences under the comprehensive plan. And so, you know, anytime that's, that we receive a rezoning request, we evaluate it based upon those types of criteria. What does the comprehensive plan say? What is the transitional uses? Uh, you know, and, and institutional, frankly, is one of the um, zoning districts that we use to transition from single-family residential so is it a spot zone I would say no because it is it is uh, conforming to the comprehensive plan under the idea that we've been identifying this as a major institutional area with several influences from campuses so. you know this reminds me of some of the things with uh, Sanford Hospital yeah. but I think uh, staff or the city designated a boundary, uh, a neighborhood for And the city's office is always pretty August any issues of a really there's increase because of student house things like that. That's type you know way some of those temperatures. Thank you, David. Mr. Chair, yes, Mayor. David, I think it'd be really tough to consider this a zone when the vast majority of those properties are rentals already supporting three students, That's or three people, and this trend. 
I think zoning would be if this neighborhood was all single family owner occupied and we were asking for a reason to noted, you know, recognizes this area as a major institution and has to deal with some of the influences that result because of that. So. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Just a quick question. <clears throat> I don't know how far back your history goes, but do you recall anything that's on record that would verify the fact that that Mr. Oh, any. something lightly so it would never change on this particular piece thank, thank you. you any other questions for David thank you David thank you Mr. Chair, can we call Frank back up, please? I'm sorry. I'd... Call Frank back up. Frank? If it does. And control somewhat that you do follow up with them and take care of the issue. To save his life would. would okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Frank. Uh, any other comments? Seeing none, I would entertain a motion. I'll make a motion to approve item number four. We have a motion. Would there be a second? A second. A second. We we have a second. Discussion. I think this probably falls quite a bit like the first one. I, I'm hoping the folks here that are concerned about it can feel comfortable in the fact that I think they'll be a lot happier with an Anna College doing this than a and someone else doing it, uh, and I, I hope that you guys can feel that way. Uh, having said that, uh, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 Okay. All opposed? Motion passes. Six room hotel at 200 East 8th Street. The applicant is Lloyd with uh, CR Lloyd Associates, I, th I believe represented by Wayne Beam tonight, and the owner is Al Shoneman with Shoneman Brothers. The area is just under three acres in size. It's zoned under the C3 Central Business District. Uh, budding zoning and land uses are all C3 and generally downtown related land uses, resulting in a compatibility rating of five. In July 2010, the Planning Commission voted to recommend approval of the rezone of, of rezoning the subject property from the RC Recreation Conservation District to the C3 Central Business District. The City Council voted to approve the rezoning in August of 2010. A design review application was approved for the property to the south, which is the Lumber Exchange or CNA building, in the fall of 2010. In addition, Tax Increment Finance District number 14 was approved by the Planning Commission in the City in the spring of 2012. I won't uh, specifically read the design review requirements or the responses verbatim. 
So I'm going to conclude the staff report with our um, conclusion and policy analysis section, but if there are any questions, I can certainly go back and relay those. Uh, the Shape Sioux Falls 2035 Comprehensive Plan designates this area as a regional employment center which should include commercial, office, residential, and institutional uses. This subject property lies within the downtown boundary and the proposal reflects the intent of both the 2015 downtown plan and the 2035 Comprehensive Plan. The applicants have provided a well-designed modern building for design review approval. Planning staff is confident the proposal meets the intent of both the downtown design district and the River Greenway Design Review District and that the proposal will provide a significant enhancement to downtown Sioux Falls. At a meeting in May 2010, the Downtown Design Review Committee approved the building design and architecture of the subject proposal. Because the subject application generally meets the intent and purpose of the Downtown Design Review District, the River Greenway Design Review District, and meets the intent of both the 2015 Downtown Plan and the 2035 Comprehensive Plan, Staff is recommending approval of the downtown design review application with five stipulations. The first is final landscape plan shall be submitted to the planning director or designee for approval prior to the issuance of a building permit. Uh, number two, master sign plan shall be submitted for approval of the downtown design review committee and the planning director or designee. Fi number three, final lighting master plan shows a photometric plan and plans for the style, type, and height of all proposed outdoor lighting elements should be submitted to, for approval by the planning director. Item number four, ash or ash varieties shall not be used to meet minimum landscaping requirements and a schedule denoting the size and species of proposed plants and trees should be submitted with final landscaping plans. And finally, item number five is trash enclosure and utility equipment shall be located to not interfere with the function or view sheds of the pedestrian pathways along the River Greenway. Any enclosure or utility boxes and equipment located adjacent to the Greenway shall be screened using landscaping incorporated thank you would there be any questions for david david in looking at the various renderings that we have you technically ends specifically the river greenway uh, let's see if you can go back further down that line that he just passed up <laughs> actually here <laughs> I think you can see it right here there's a there's a dotted line mm -hmm. on that's just outside of the uh, hotel there and that's that's the property line and so the city will own the property from that line to the river. So really none of this uh, that, that's on here beyond that property line will be done. Yep. Yep, yep that's it. And so will the city do all the pat this patio up to the property line and then the hotel takes it from the property line in yeah there it looks is like it's all one yeah there is collaboration on both the greenway master plan um, that the city is undergoing and the users of the hotel or the of the owners of the hotel and i would be more comfortable actually having the applicant answer the questions on exactly where those sure collaborations occur any other questions for david David, oh, David, thank you. Thank you. Would the petitioner, uh, is the petitioner here? We with uh, Lloyd Companies, kind of standing in for Craig Lloyd tonight. Just here to answer any questions. Can you the, answer the, my the, question? The question about the uh, the boundary. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Steve, if you want to flip back, there was uh, there was one plan that had just the just the boundaries on it. I think it might have been yeah, right up back back to right there. That actually shows the the the, the boundary. Now the the patio isn't overlaid in that drawing, but the patio construction is is by us. 
so the boundary that uh, Confluence is carrying on their plan um, isn't isn't really the current boundary. This one is. This is the one that was developed by us. So if you want to flip back to that whole, that uh, last plan, maybe the larger scale one, that's probably good enough. The uh, we set that boundary so we could get just beyond uh, the major patio component. However, we are taking responsibility for for developing. Uh, essentially out to the uh, the back of the retaining wall for the large ADA bike path kind of where the four trees are towards the center okay so those uh, yep, those right there so those those trees are kind of in our development territory uh, the river greenway project is taking care of the large walls that go along with the ADA ramp so then moving over to the radius portion uh, where the uh, uh, I guess the, the, the water feature is intended to be or was intended to be uh, basically, the Greenway project is taking care of of the uh, again the tall wall, the radius to the hotel, right there. Yep, exactly. And then uh, everything that's kind of on the back side of that wall, or a few feet beyond the back side of that wall, falls underneath our jurisdiction as well. Thank you. So that citizens see sure. just what's going on down there and how it's going to lay out and how it's going to look. Uh, it's pretty too. Thank you. Any other questions for Wade? Thank you. Is there anyone uh, else in the audience that would like to address item number 14? If not, we look for a motion. Make a motion to approve item 14. We have a motion, and that motion is with the stipulations, I believe, that... Uh, yes, yeah. with the stipulations. That's uh, right. We have a motion to approve item 14. We have a second. Any discussion? All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Number 15. All right, item number 15 is a rezone from the I-1 Light Industrial District and the RC Recreation Conservation District to the C-4 Planned Commercial District RA-2 Residential District and the RC Recreation Conservation District for allowed uses at 3400 South Grange Avenue. The applicant is Don Dunham with Grange Land Ventures, LLC. He is here tonight as is his consulting engineer. And if it please the chair and members of the commission, time and we can accept question then on each of those, so. You know, I wondered if we should have done that with the Augustana theme house, and David. Uh, I wasn't sure if that. It's was not the same cool. property, so you know okay. those weren't the same pieces right. of land. So I, we probably could have, but yeah. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, in continuing my staff report, uh, the area of the land inside in question is about 26 acres. Uh, the abutting zoning and land uses to the north is C4 Plan Commercial with the restaurant retail uses, compatibility rating of five. To the south and to the east are I-1 light industrial uses that are vacant or have warehouse uses on them with compatibility ratings of four. And to the west is also C-4 planned commercial, which is a major retail strip with a compatibility rating of five. The Williams addition has undergone several recent rezoning requests as proposals for the property have developed, most recently in the fall of 2011 when current district boundaries were established. At this time, the applicant has indicated that several uses for the overall property have been determined and is requesting the rezone to establish the necessary boundaries for the potential users. The site will be divided into three districts, each governed by regulations established in the zoning ordinance. The proposed districts are noted above, and I noted those as the C4, the RA2, and the RC districts. Uh, the traffic impact study is currently underway as of the drafting of this report and uh, still as of tonight. The impact study has not yet been approved by the city and specific recommendations for traffic handling are unknown. 
Uh, the subject property is located in the developed portion of the city and water sewer services are available. Due to large increases in traffic that can be anticipated with the rezoning to additional commercial and multifamily acreage, traffic impacts may be substantial. A traffic impact study is required for the proposal and as I noted, it is not yet complete but will be considered as part of a future conditional use permit application. Because the proposal is in conformance with the Shape Sioux Falls comprehensive plan and will provide for additional public hearings, uh, staff is recommending approval of the rezoning. And I can move into the preliminary plan and just hit a couple more notes. Uh, 16 is a preliminary plan, uh, subdivision plan for the Williams edition, which is a multiple use subdivision. And the applicant is, is the same. John Dunham, Grange Land, Grange Land Adventure, LLC, and he is requesting approval in order to begin site preparation for commercial and residential uses. Uh, as I noted, the traffic impact study is probably the largest issue that's out there. Uh, we are comfortable zoning in the preliminary subdivision plan forward at this time with the knowledge that any conditional use permit application will need to have that traffic impact study completed and approved by city engineering prior to its hearing by the Planning Commission. Uh, otherwise, all uh, requirements of the preliminary subdivision plan have been provided and development of any commercial site larger than one acre will require a conditional use permit to be approved by the Planning Commission, and which, it, which I just said, at which time the approved traffic impact study will be finalized. So because the preliminary subdivision plan offers coordination of urban infrastructure and fosters efficient and, or efficient and urban growth, Thank you, David. Any questions for David? David, could you just share with us quickly, when you say a traffic report, what specifically is that traffic report? What's a good uh, traffic studies when we ask for them model the increase in traffic and then what would what that would result in as far as uh, you know the intersection surrounding the property what additional improvements may be necessary or needed long term and so you know like I said you know we are comfortable with moving this forward as part of uh, we did a campaign study and the traffic you know uh, ninth is going to be do you have uh, any ideas to It's dependent upon funding in the capital. There are several ways to look at the traffic. I think the 49th Street corridor will be one of them. Um, mm -hmm. and, you know, and that's where the traffic impact study gets into alternatives and level of service. And so that's, you know, clearly what we'll be looking at as we move forward. So. Okay. Thank you, David. Any other questions for David? Not. Team and John Dunham, Grange Land Venture LLC. Um, in regards to items 15 and 16, I'll represent both those items. We did have a neighborhood meeting uh, regarding both of these applications. We notified people within 300 feet, property owners within feet of the project site. Um, at that meeting, we did answer questions to the surrounding property owners, and at that time, we did not have any objections to this project or to either one of these applications moving forward. Um, we have read staff's report, and we do not have uh, any objections to staff. and approval from the commission. Um, I would answer questions from the commission and Mr. Dunham is here as well and he could answer any questions that you may have in regards to the rezoning or the preliminary subdivision plan. Well, very good. Would there be any questions for Damien? Would there be any questions for Mr. Dunham? Damien, I think you've answered everyone's questions. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Is there anyone else here in the audience that would like to address this issue this evening? 
Seeing none, uh, Chair would recommend a motion. Mr. Chair, I'd make the uh, motion to approve the rezoning item number 15. We have a motion. Would there be a second? Second. We have a motion and a second. Uh, discussion? Seeing none, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. Uh, Steve, our next one would be 17 because 18 and 19. 16. <clears throat> Pardon? We need to vote on 16. Oh, we didn't vote on it? Oh. All in favor will signify by saying yes. I'll make a motion that we, what we approve. approve item number 16 first. I'll second. <laughs> we have a motion. We have a second. Any discussion? I'm speechless. <laughs> All in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Uh, item 16 is also approved. <laughs> Good job, guys. Thank you. Uh, item 17 on your agenda, the old Yankton Trail development, it's a rezoning and the applicant is Les Kinstead. I believe the applicant is out of town and has a uh, representative here to speak for him to uh, the development of the property and uh, the proposed rezoning. It's located at the southeast corner of the intersection of West 57th and West Old Yankton. As everybody knows, that area has been kind of redeveloped uh, developed over recently because of a realignment of Old Yankton Road and new development, uh, commercial development at the intersection uh, 57th and Western. Uh, at that time, there were studies uh, involved in uh, development of the subject property. However, it did not proceed in conjunction with the commercial development at the corner. Uh, the applicant now does wish to proceed with a rezoning that would allow commercial development and in order to accomplish that development they have to vacate all of that right-of-way that's included uh, or was previously included as intersection with West 57th. Uh, so they have proposed a plan that with the rezoning, the vacating of the street, approximately two point uh, three acres would be available for commercial development. Zoning and aerial vicinity maps indicate by zoning exhibit uh, the proposed development. There's a concept plan presented and to the north we have recreation and conservation farm field park which does not have a compatibility rating. It's across an arterial street. To the south it's RS1 residential. There's a church property located there and we have a compatibility rating of three. To the east, it's commercial, so it's compatible. And to the west, it's office uh, and open drainage way. It would not be developed, therefore, no compatibility rating. We are concerned a little bit uh, uh, about the relationship with the church property then. And the church has uh, provided uh, support for the application, and perhaps they have a representative or can be uh, called upon to uh, indicate that support but they did sign the application uh, for rezoning. Proposed regulations and standards would go with the C4 plan commercial district. Therefore, in the future, any development would have to come back before you as a conditional use permit application uh, to look at things like compatibility with uh, adjacent uses. Concept plan to, is provided. Uh, the applicant has indicated that they will provide a new road access into the uh, development the exact details of which are not worked out yet, but the concept plan does show access out to the west to Old Yankton Road. There would not be allowed access onto West 57th. There's the possibility uh, that they would negotiate for future access into the river crossing addition to the east. Uh, I don't know the status of that. Perhaps the applicant can, or their representative can address that this evening. 
Concept plan shows a total of 96 parking spots and an L-shaped building at the center of the site. And we would review in the conditional use permit uh, then such things as setbacks, landscaping, parking, and signage. Traffic engineering indicates that uh, access uh, to 57th Street will have to be removed with the plan. Responsibility providing future access across the drainage way to West Old Yankton Road has not been decided yet, and the new entrance to the property is shown as a private road and will initiate plat fees. Otherwise, uh, a BMP will be required in conjunction with the development of the property, and uh, that's not shown on the concept plan, but it would have to be addressed. Proposed commercial use at this location adjacent to River Crossing Addition is compatible with a comprehensive plan designation of a neighborhood employment center at this part of town. The open space drainage way and office park development to the west do serve as transitions into the existing residential neighborhood. Additional landscaping and berming will be required with the required conditional use permit uh, to mitigate any possible impacts to adjacent land areas. The applicant is aware that future development requires subdivision and platting of the property as well as vacation of the road before any development plan could be considered. Plan is complete for your review and because the subject application conforms to the comprehensive plan and a concept plan for future development is provided, staff is recommending approval of the rezoning. Staff has had several calls from resident neighborhoods. Steve, would there be any questions of Steve? Mr. Danny. Chair, looking at the potential uh, street, is that what they're going to be calling it up there? Mm -hmm. On the east side there, where does that connect to? Uh, there is a parking lot right there. Uh, actually, where they're showing it connecting is, is a driveway for the parking lot, and it's an extra wide driveway. At the time we approved the River Cross, Crossing Addition Development Plan, I think the applicant, uh, Van Buskers, at that time was considering uh, connecting to the subject property for future development, but that that did not uh, progress. So, unless I'm misunderstanding, the access to this new development, if you come in from the east, you'd have to go through a parking lot to get there. Well, it would have to be done with a, by way of an easement and some kind of an agreement with the adjacent property owner. That's why I don't know if there's been any further discussion about that. That's kind of what I was wondering as the property owner. I believe that would be, what is it, Dairy Queen or whatever next yeah, door? Are they aware? Uh, well, it would be Van Buskirk's uh, development. Okay. I believe that they have been contacted about it. This looks a little odd. But it wouldn't be absolutely necessary that they had access there either. So. No, if they have access cool. out to Old Yankton Road, then mm -hmm. uh, that would not be necessary. Did you have oh, a question? I, Mr. Chair, I was just going to suggest that, uh, or ask Steve if that would be a dedicated way. That would be a It would be dedicated as a private road. So in order to maintain addressing for the church, we'd have to maintain frontage. Yeah. Uh, so that detail has to be worked out yet, too. Yeah. I think I heard you say that there would, in all likelihood, not be permitted access directly on 257th. That's correct. That'd be correct. Any other questions for Steve? Thank you, Steve. Uh, is the petitioner here? about access to this property I don't know if that's uh, a huge concern to us but certainly could be and should be to you right and I think I mean it's it's something that we've worked out with the city in terms of 
we realize there isn't going to be any access on 57th Street, so that's going to be a plus for the city. Uh, we're going to, uh, the proposed access will be right opposite the access that presently exists to the west to the uh, professional center, whatever that, uh, that's called. So that would be compatible with the city's idea of having, uh, you know, access across from one another. We would, we would propose to have the private road. Uh, then we're working with the church to the south there who's uh, also thinking of uh, doing something perhaps different and rezoning or doing something uh, in who knows. Uh, although we've been talking with them and, and they are considering doing something there. And so we'd work with them in terms of uh, making sure that they do, in fact, have frontage if and whenever we do replant this and, and create the private road. Okay. You've got it under control then. Right. I, I mean, we're fully aware of <laughs> there's many obstacles, but, you know, uh, very supportive and very helpful and, and uh, encouraging to to us and to, uh, you know, we're hoping that this. There be any questions for Doug? Doug, I think you've done a fine job. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to address this particular issue? Seeing none, I would look for a motion. I will make a motion to approve item 17. We have a motion. Uh, would there be a second? I'll second that. Motion and a second. Would there be any discussion regarding this particular item? If not, all in favor will signify by saying yes. 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 All opposed? Motion passes. That brings us to items 18 and 19, which have been deferred. But before I ask for adjournment, I'd like uh, David Love to stand. David has been to, to joke around. David. Uh, with that being said, <laughs> I would look for a motion for adjournment. Go oh. vote. And a second. All in favor signify by saying yes. Yes. All opposed? Meeting adjourned.